It's Wednesday night, October 4th, and time for a little update. Yesterday at Strand, for those who watch my videos, that's where I go every day during my lunch break, I bought Outside, Jim Bridger, Mountain Man by Stanley Vestal, soft cover, it's in excellent condition, a dollar. And then, of course, October is like Edgar Allan Poe month because of Halloween and the type of stories that he wrote. And outside they had hardcover, excellent shape, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, complete tales and poems. I put a, sleeve, a clear broad art sleeve on it, keep it nice, and two dollars. And then, uh, this is also $2, the um, new, I'm uh, sorry, The American Heritage New History of the Civil War by Bruce Catton and was edited with an introduction by James M. McPherson. And this is a big, heavy book. The dust jacket's a, uh, you know, it's not perfect. It's a little bit, uh, I don't know. A little bit rough around the, some of the edges. It's hard to see in the video. Nothing terrible by any means. Um, overall, excellent condition. The book is great. And, uh, you know, just. Let's find something else. I have this in an older version without McPherson's uh, input. Map. And uh, that one is from a four volume set of American Heritage books. It has a, the Revolution, American Revolution, the Civil War, World War One, and World War Two. And so this is like an updated Civil War uh, book from that set. Two dollars, not a bad deal. I'm off the next two days, so I won't be going to any bookstores. I have nothing on order. Actually, I have, I have one book on pre-order that I should be getting next week. And Saturday, we're off to Connecticut, to one of my favorite bookstores. So I'm sure I'll have some books for Saturday night for a video. And uh, that's about it for this one. Take care. Sunday, October 8th, and yesterday was a pretty good book haul. I got 26 paperbacks and 17 other books, uh, especially like hardcovers, and so those came that came to uh, another 17 for a total of 43 books, if you're doing the math. So let me start with the paperbacks. Um, the Beasts of Tarzan, these were just a dollar each, and they're like in excellent shape. Uh, the Beasts of Tarzan, number three. Some of them have yellow uh, border around the picture, some have a white, and this has none. They seem to like release them with different, uh, slightly different covers. This is number six, Tarzan, Jungle Tales of, of Tarzan. Of course, Edgar Rice Burroughs is the author of the Tarzan novels. Um, Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, number 11. Tarzan and the Lost Empire, number 12. Again, these are all in very good shape. Some of them may not have even been read. Number 15, Tarzan Triumphant. Tarzan and the City of Gold, number 16. Tarzan's Quest, number 19. And Tarzan and the Madman, number 23. Now, at Strand, these books would be $15 each. I got them for a dollar each. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight of them. So you could imagine uh, eight times 15. Oh, boy, don't make me do math Sunday morning. So for a six to be $120, I got this for $8. Pays to, to get out of the city. So let me put this over here and get to the next bunch. Now this book, you would think I would have had it already, but I actually have it in a compilation, but not by itself. So I finally bought Shane by Jack Schaefer. Will Cook, um, that's not the name of the book, that's the author, The Outcast. It's a little bit, some uh, book got a little bit messed up over here, from like an old price label that was taken off. 
This book, I think, is about um, Apaches being cheated on the reservation, the corruption, and some white men try to help them out. Um, that's what I think it's about. Apache Devil, Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is with the Tarzan novels, not in the Western section. And uh, it's a cool cover. I think I have this cover already, but for a dollar, I'm going to get it again. Mike Shane, Stranger in Town by Brett Halliday. And this was a dollar. Well, paperbacks are a dollar. And I have this with a different cover, more of a vintage cover. So if I was to read it, which hopefully I get to read all these books, um, I'd probably read this one and save the vintage one. Now this book, you know, every time I go out looking for books, especially at the store I was at yesterday, I'm always looking for this book. And I can never find it. It's been a long time. It was the last one I needed to finish out my series. And I finally like, broke down and bought it on the internet. Like $4 shipping plus the price of the book. And that was not too long ago that I got the book. Within the last month or two. And all of a sudden I see it on the shelf. After so many times looking for it. Uh, the name is Archer Ross McDonald. It's like short stories. The Lou Archer character. And a dollar. Isn't that how it goes? Now this I purchased only because of the cover. It's uh, called Don't Count the Corpses. And it's by Christopher Monig. And it's got a Robert McGinnis cover. So. And that would have been $15 a strand. And then I finished it up with four James Bond books. Two that I had and two that I didn't. Uh, Live and Let Die. Diamonds of Forever. Goldfinger. And The Spy Who Loved Me. So I need a few more of the James Bond novels to finish out. I have to check what I, what I still need. And this will be the last stack of the paperbacks here. So then I noticed um, there was a, an area where they had some, where they put a, a bunch of paperbacks and they had all in one spot uh, these four books. So it must have been part of like a set that someone got rid of. Uh, the Thousand Plane Raid, Ralph Barker. And yes, I'm us losing my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Ralph Barker. This looks unread. The Heights of Zervos, uh, Colin Forbes, the World War II book, there's a, like a tank down here, and they're in like the mountains, and there's a, like a, not a really a castle, but like a compound up atop of this mountain here. Tramp and Armor, also by Colin Forbes, and looks unread. And then Arch of Triumph by, I'm not sure how you really say his name, but Eric, I guess it's Maria, the middle name, Remark. Or I'm not sure how you really say his last name. And he wrote, of course, All Quiet on the Western Front, which I decided to buy when I saw it since I was buying his other, this other book by him. And this looks unread, and it's got a cool old vintage cover. Then, uh, maybe somewhat embarrassingly, I don't know, but a kind of like Pride and Prejudice. So I, not the book I haven't read it yet, but the, but the old movie with Lawrence Olivier. And so I bought, uh, this was a dollar, Jane Austen, Northanger Abbey. And it you know, look, look, got good reviews, looks kind of interesting, and maybe one day I'll read it, you know, a classic. Um, C.J. Cherry, Rim Runners. This has uh, good reviews. And looked interesting to me, although the cover doesn't really appeal to me that much. I was trying not to judge the book by its cover. And then I have another book by Mary Renault. And this is The King Must Die. I forget the title of the other one. But this is a part of a series with it. Now there's one more that I need to finish out that series. Okay, to continue. This next book was a dollar, and I can't figure out why. I already have it, but it was a dollar. Hardcover, Custer, The Controversial Life of George Armstrong Custer, Jeffrey Wirt. I looked it over. Are there any marks on it? Pages missing, stains. I see nothing wrong with it. It was out for a dollar from 1996, so it's already over 20 years old. Hard to believe. Then, this looked interesting. Francis Parkman, 
the story and his hero. It already came with this uh, clear jacket on it. This is by Wilbur Jacobs, Wilbur R. Jacobs, and uh, has you know background information on Parkman and his writings, and thought that sounded interesting. Then this was something I just found by accident. I didn't realize they. I knew they must have had a section with atheist books, but I didn't realize I was standing right next to it. I never looked actively looked for books about them. And just like when we were going to go home, I, I spotted this. Um, A.C. Grayling, The God Argument, The Case Against Religion and For Humanism. And it's a, a pretty new book in the last few years. Then, uh, Andy Adams' Campfire Tales. This is an old Bison book, Nebraska Press. And... Uh, Original price nine fifty. I paid four dollars for it. Nice shape. Uh, the Englishman's Boy by Guy Van Der Heeg, I guess is how you say it. I have another book by him, The Last Crossing, I think it's called. Haven't read it yet, but uh, this was a nice shape. Four dollars. This Edgar Allan Poe, His Life and Legacy by Jeffrey Myers. They had some other Edgar Allan Poe books too, but um, one of them was like written in, and I just wound up only getting this one. I might get another one or two that I, if they still have them when I go back again, who knows? You never know. Or well, they'll have new stuff. This, these next four were a dollar each. These are old books from, I guess, the late 60s, early 70s, they look like. I should have looked up the. Uh, publication dates inside, but they look to be late 60s, early 70s. Anzio, The Bid for Rome, the old soft covers. Um, Okinawa, Touchstone to Victory. Again, these are all like in really nice shape, and it was just sitting outside on Iraq. Um, not not in Iraq, the country, but Iraq. Uh, Kasserine, Baptism of Fire, and Midway, The Turning Point. And my air conditioner just turned on by itself. Well, not totally by itself. I have it on a timer, and I didn't realize it was about to go off. Because with it in the background, you can't hear what I'm saying. Not that you want to. Uh, Stephen Long and American Frontier Exploration by Roger Nichols and Patrick Halley. And, uh, this Oklahoma Press. Four dollars. This is a dollar. The Military History Quarterly has some articles of interest in here. Cover is not so great on this one, but Again, only a dollar, and there were some good articles inside. This is the most expensive book I paid for all day, and I don't know why it was this price, but I looked it up online, and it would have cost um, as much or more to get it, so I just went and, and bought it. Because a lot of times this store doesn't really, that I could tell, price their stuff based on the Internet. But this one they seemed to a little bit, or it was higher priced anyway. Um, they drew fire, combat artists of World War II. And uh, this is by Brian Lanker and Nicole Noonham. And there was also apparently some kind of like a, a documentary made about this also, which I've, I'm going to have to look up online. Maybe it's on YouTube. I have a lot of Lewis and Clark books, and this was in nice shape. It's like $4. Lewis and Clark, An American Journey by Daniel Thorpe. And the last three, this book was only $6, amazingly. It's like brand new. Look how thick this is. A photograph, uh, World War II, A Photographic History. It's a big, heavy book. And just filled with photographs. It's really cool. Let me see if I just, this is like a hard one to maneuver. You really can't see it too well. Like this. I don't want to break it open too, too much. Um, but it's a big, heavy book, and it was only $6. Then these next two are obviously part of a series, The Faces of War. This is World War One by uh, forward by Ian Hislop, Hislop, H I S L O P. World War One Faces of War. And the next one I have, but I have it in a different version, and it's a smaller book. And I thought maybe this was expanded, but I'm not really sure that it is. I have to check them out carefully with the one I have. This is The Faces of World War Two by Max Hastings. And again, I have a smaller version of this book. This this looks like it's um, was published in the UK for for. Well, actually, there is a U.S. price in here and a Canadian price also, but this is a different 
printing of that other book that I have. And I'm not, again, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same or if this one's expanded because it, it's bigger. You would think there'd be something else in it. I don't know. So that's it for the book haul yesterday. And uh, I only go to work two days this week. It's a short week because of some holidays. And uh, so I won't be a strand too much. That's about it. Till next time. i got to find places for all these books now. Bye. It's Saturday night, October 14th, or should I say like Saturday Night Live, it's Saturday night. I would yell it, but my kid fell asleep a few minutes ago. I don't want to wake him. Um, so, this week I didn't get to the bookstore a lot because we, I only had work on Tuesday and Wednesday, so I only got to strand those two days. Monday, Thursday, and Friday I was off from work because of holidays. So, uh, once in a while it's strand... I'll go inside and find something for a good price. But for the most part, I only buy outside. But this week I found, I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday, but I found, I think it was Wednesday, Hollywood Bedlam by William K. Everson. I have a Western movie book by him. And it's in great shape, Seven fifty Seems like a really good deal. Because just to get it online, it's $4 just to have it shipped to me. And for like new copy like this one pretty much is it, it's not worth the worth it so the 750 that was a good deal then uh, tw twice in the last 10 days a book I received from Amazon I had to return the same book it's a book about the fur trade and I remember that I remember the name of it right now but it's a like hundred dollar book it's new from University of Nebraska Press and they sent it to me twice first time it was damaged, sent it back, and second time they put this heavy, big, heavy book in a manila envelope, like like, like a bubble wrap kind of envelope, but it was no protection at all. The book was just like smashed. It looked like, you know, like a truck ran over it. Horrible. So I sent that back, and I'm waiting to get it again, and if this, if this time it's still messed up, I'm going to just get the money back and order it directly from the publisher, which I should have done to begin with. But I was trying to save the shipping charges. So I thought, you know, well, I get free shipping and I'll save a little bit of money. And sometimes they discount books anyway. So you get it for a little bit less than the, than the asking price, the list price anyway. But Amazon just doesn't know how to ship books, generally speaking, and big heavy books particularly. They just, they're clueless. On purpose, too. I mean, there's no, there's no excuse. There's just no excuse. Especially because they get a lot of complaints and they just don't do anything. Enough on that. So, today we went to the Brooklyn Public Library. And it was a madhouse, as it always is. I'll get to that in a second. First, we, I wanted to leave like an hour early. Just so we can get parking, walk over there. Because they usually put out the books a little bit earlier anyway. And... You know, it's just a mob there, and they start looking before 10 o'clock. And you know, if I'm there, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to just stand back and wait for 10 o'clock. But then there was some kind of marathon that was ending, and they had the main roads to get there closed off. So it was just like a mess, and we had to go around a long way to get over there. And it was like already 10 o'clock, a few minutes after, and I'm like really getting frustrated. And I was like, let's just go home. And then we were going to probably just leave because, or, or unless my wife could find a place to pull over and I would just go and look at the books and she would stay in the car. Which really isn't a good idea because we were there for like two plus hours. Was she going to sit in the car for all that time? Luckily, luckily we found a great spot like almost across the street from the book sale. Um, it was just, just sitting there, a rarity <laughs> in that area especially. Um... So, luck was on our side, parked, ran across the street, and found 12 books. My son found 7 or 8, and my wife bought a couple. One of them for a brother or sister if they want it. A, a book of mysteries, which I already have. But if they don't want it, it has a different cover than what I have, so I'll be happy to take it um, if they don't want it. So, 12 books I got today. Let me go over them in no particular order. Uh, everything was a dollar, so whether it's a big hardcover book, a little paperback, it's just a dollar straight across, which is e easy to deal with. Okay, so I got the uh, 
paperback, the complete short stories of Mark Twain. And I wasn't even going to buy this, but I was flipping through it, and I came across a short story that was mentioning the 7th Cavalry, and uh, I thought, like, wow, there's something about it. the tale of a horse, T-A-L-E, I think was the name of the story. Looked, you know, something I'd never known that he'd written, and so... And I know he, he write, you know, wrote some famous stories, and he's supposed to be a good writer, so I figured for a dollar, I'll get the complete short stories of Mark Twain. Then, this, I'm, I was surprised to see this, and it was like in just excellent condition. Uh, the complete short stories of Ambrose Bierce. Now, I know I had a, a book of his with that title or something close to it, but I didn't even like bother looking it up. It was only a dollar, and I knew I didn't have this, even if I had it, that this soft cover version did not look familiar to me. But when I got home and I looked to see the copy that I had that had a similar name, it actually has the exact name. It's this one. These are the same book. But that's cool to have it in two different ways. I'm fine with it. This is uh, The Complete Short Stories of Ambrose Bierce. It's 93 Tales of War, Horror, and the Absurd. And it's compiled with commentary by Ernest Jerome Hopkins. So now I have the hard cover and paper and soft cover. And what's funny is I got this for maybe fifty cents or a dollar. I think I got this when they were having a sale. It was probably a dollar, and this was a dollar. So both of these two dollars. That's a good deal. Then someone had a. I saw someone holding an Edgar Allan Poe book. A biography by a guy named Silverman. I was a little bit frustrated, or what should I say, disappointed, not frustrated, because I was a little bit late, and, and I, who knows, he might have gotten it first anyway, I don't know. Um, but, you know, I was disappointed because I would have liked to have gotten that book. But when I looked it up online on Amazon, there's mixed, mixed reviews, but some of the people who don't like it talk about a lot of errors in the book, and I don't know, I'm not a Poe expert, so... I'll just let it slide right now. Um, it's always there on the internet if I want to get a copy, or maybe I'll see it somewhere else. Um, but I did see this book. It's called 20th Century Interpretations of Poe's Tales. It's a little skinny book, and it had this like library jacket already on it. And it's edited by William L. Howarth, a collection of critical essays. And it lists some writers down at the bottom. And so it looks pretty interesting. Um, it's kind of, you know, commentary on Poe's stories. And it was only a dollar. And in this book, I surprisingly never did buy. And when I saw it today, I thought, what the hell. Carl Sagan, The Demon Haunted World. I didn't put a library jacket on it yet. I'm going to read a little bit of it first. And if I like it, I'll and, you know put the jacket on it. I'm trying to not use them as quick as I used to. I was putting them on everything, and uh, although I'm sure this should be a good book, um, I'm just going to hold off right now. Then, oh, and then I have a funny story. Remind me before I say goodbye here to tell you the story. Don't forget to remind me. Um, now this book here, I don't know if it ever had a dust jacket. It's Encyclopedia of North American Indians by Frederick E. Hoxie, editor. And excellent shape. It's basically just a encyclopedia type. Are there any images in here? Uh, let me just take a quick look. Yeah, there's a few images. It's not image heavy, but there's a few. So for a dollar, that was a pretty good bargain. Then, this was, I was going to say also a dollar, but I just said everything's a dollar. Um, the Reader's Companion to Military History. And this also, I didn't put on the Broad Art Clear jacket yet. And this is edited by Robert Cowley and Jeffrey Parker. And this is basically... You know, I probably should put a jacket on this. I probably would keep it. Um, excuse me as I just look for an interesting page with pictures. There are pictures, but I'm like turning every page without one. Um, so there's like helicopters, and it's, it has all these different uh, like subheadings in here: mutiny, 
medals and insignia, Marines, Logistics, Legions, Robert E. Lee, 100 day, uh, War of the 100 Days, the 100 Years, War. Lots of different titles, uh, French Revolution, World War One battles, and different battles, World War Two, all different stuff. So, and it got good reviews also. Then, then when I was on the way to go pay, I actually found this. They were still putting out books. We left, it started at 10, we left about noon. I would have liked, they were still putting out books. I would have liked to stay. It was going on until 3 o'clock, but my wife had something to take care of. <clears throat> so we left. But uh, as I was walking away, I just took another quick look and I saw this. They had just must have just put it down. Um, Sinatra, Remembering Sinatra, Life in Pictures. Obviously, Life Magazine. And Great Shape. This was a terrible movie I opened up to. Sergeant's 3. <laughs> Not a good movie. Um, but... Uh, just fill with pictures and it looks interesting for a dollar. What the hell? Okay, had to stop there for a second and rearrange the books. Then I got this big book here, which I already had, but it was a dollar. Um, couldn't say no. Great Hollywood Westerns by uh, Ted Sennett. It says it down here. It's hard to read because it's red. And this book basically has lots of great pictures and, you know, for a dollar, it's hard to say no, even if you have it. Um, I'll show one more page, this one's black and white, but there's color in here, it's a really nice book. And overall it was in great shape, I put the broad art jacket on it to protect it. And that'll be an, a nice reading copy for me. Then I got uh, World, the First World War, John Keegan. This is text heavy. But I figure, you know, if I didn't get it, I'd feel bad. It's in great shape. Buck, what the hell. Then, um, this was something I never would have bought in the past, but I've been buying the James Bond books. This is a few of the novels all in one book. So it's Ian Fleming. It's From Russia With Love, Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, Diamonds Are Forever, Dr. No, and Goldfinger. So six books in one. Excellent shape. Um, I kind of like the design in here. It's hard to see, but it says Ian Fleming again and again and again. Um, so I think that was a pretty good find for a buck, a dollar. I shouldn't say buck, I should say a dollar. And I shouldn't even say that because I keep saying it. You already know how much the books are. They were a dollar. So this was only a dollar. Um, so this is something I never would have bought in the past, but I kind of got into Jane Austen a little bit and haven't read anything yet, but price was right. So, uh, four novels in one and it's like the gold glitter and so it's a Jane Austen, four novels, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Emma and North Anger Abbey. Like gold gilt, I guess you call it. Not really glitter, but like gold gilt. And there's an introduction here. So, kind of cool. And then, speaking of Jane Austen, so, so this woman had, had this... Uh, as I was walking by, she was putting this down. Like she didn't want it. I didn't know if anything was wrong with it. And I had no time to spend looking at it. I just picked it up and figured I'll check them out later and see. Because, you know, you, you're in a rush to get books. So I just figured I'll just hold on to it and check it out later. And in great shape. This is uh, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, an annotated edition. And edited by Patricia Meyer Spax. It's got excellent reviews online. For a dollar, this was absolutely a great find. Um, it's illustrated. And I, I really like the movie, so I'm curious to you know kind of read along a little bit at a time and 
read the annotations and learn more about that place and time. I think it was interesting. So, oh, so now the uh, little story I wanted to tell you. Thanks for reminding me. Of the 12 books that I purchased, 9 or 10 of them, maybe 11 of them, probably no more than 10 of them, um, had a name written inside. A small print, I was able to like white it out, not a big deal. For a dollar, I'm not going to complain. It was, But all of them had the same name. Even the, 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 the uh, Jane Austen, the movie book, the Ian Fleming book. This guy had like the same taste as me, Milton Goldstein. I don't know who this is. But I just kept picking up books that had his name in them. He must have donated them or he died and family donated them to the library. I don't know. But it was just weird that I kept getting all these books that had his name written in little ink. Like I said, it wasn't a big deal. Um, you, know, you can't complain when a book is a dollar and it's a nice book. So I thought that was just kind of interesting. And... Uh, that's it for the next week. I'm back to Strand on my daily lunch walk. And uh, I think I'm going to watch a movie now. It's Saturday night, almost midnight. And uh, I think I'll watch a little movie. Bye. Okay, it's Saturday night, October 21st. And I was a few minutes into this video already when I ran out of recording space. So I had to delete a movie that I had on the tablet to uh, make room for this video. So... Let's start again. First of all, I noticed the shirt's a little bit big for me. Um, I see myself on camera here. But it was my dad's. It's kind of just for around the house. And uh, so here we go. I'm wearing it to remember my dad. Books. What books did I get this week? I haven't made an update since last Saturday night. So first of all, last Saturday we went to the Brooklyn Public Library, which I did a clip for, the last clip. And... This was in my pile of books, Great Detectives, but I didn't buy it. I already had it. But my wife thought it looked like a nice book and thought maybe her brother or sister might want it. So she bought it for them. It was only a dollar. And they didn't want it. So this will be my reading copy. Cool cover. Then this week at Strand, this was, uh, I think, ha it was half off. So what was it? It was like 13 and change, 13.50. Blood Brothers... The story of the strange friendship between Sitting Bull and Buffalo Bill by Deanne Stillman. I um, actually started reading this book already. I um, read over 100 pages in it. There's like 200 and something pages. So I'm almost halfway through. I really can't recommend it. Um, there's a lot of historical errors in here. It's easy to read, so you know, I'm gonna, I want to just continue it and finish it. I hate to not finish a book. I've only done that a very, very few times in my life. Um, so I started it. I want to finish it, but not much to recommend it, unfortunately. Basically, whatever's good in here, you know, is copied from other books, and a lot of statements she makes are just wrong. She really doesn't know the topic. If you want like a couple of examples, she she refers to Bloody Knife as a Crow Indian instead of an Arikara. Um, he was part of Rickera, part Lakota. Then she mentions the Nez Perce Indians and says that they were holding out along the Canadian border for several months. Like, what? No, I don't think so. Um, so she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Too bad. Simon and Schuster should have known better than to publish that as is. Um, and the people on the back who gave it, like, rave reviews... You know, I guess they're just repaying someone a favor. Okay, this next book, let me give you a little story about it. Um, this is, a, a, first of all, a big, heavy book. Got this through Amazon. It was $100. A Fur Trader on the Upper Missouri, the journal and description of Jean-Baptiste Trouteau, 1794 to 1796. And edited by Raymond J. Damali, Douglas R. Parks, and Robert Vizina. So this is a big, heavy book. Amazon shipped it to me, maybe like you know, two, three week, two to three weeks ago, in a box, loose, no packing, no bubble wrap around it, smashed up, you know, dust jacket was damaged, the book was damaged, there was some pages that were bent, it was just not, not in good shape, bounced around too much in the box. So I 
sent it back, complained, and they sent me another copy. And this copy they didn't even put in a box. They put it in like a padded, uh, like a bubble envelope. Okay, like a manila bubble envelope. No protection at all. The book was smashed really bad. Um, really banged in. Like, when you opened up the pa the text block, all the pages were like like really bent, really bad inside. Like the whole thing was like, like, like like something came down really hard on it over here and like kind of just bent it all and then some other damage to it. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with these people? So I returned it and got another one. And this one was the best of the bunch. It was, it's a little bit on the spine here. Um, you can't really see it, but it's a little bit crinkly. Like it got banged a little bit, but not too bad. But I called and I complained. Actually, I did the email chat live. You could talk to somebody through the computer. So I was complaining and saying, you know, I'm going to keep sending it back till I get a good, you know, brand new good copy or give me a discount. So the guy offers me 20% off of, eight, of $100, which is be $20. So I said, no, it's not enough. I would like to get the book for $70. I'll keep it for $70, I said, which would be 30%. I didn't give in the percentages. He gave me in a percentage. He said 20%. He said 20%. I said, no, $70, which... Translate to 30%. And he responds to me, I can't give you that much, but I can give you 35%. So he said no to $70, and then he offered me 35%, which was $35. Easy math. We're dealing with $100, right? So right away, I'm like, yeah, I'll take that deal, sure. And then with, with like tax back on that and some shipping back, I wound up getting like $38 and change back on the book. So the book is, you know, good, you know, just, just minor along the spine. And uh, I wound up getting, getting it for $65, basically, the book. So that's pretty cool. Then uh, October being Edgar Allan Poe month, there was one, uh, there was one, I have an annotated book by him. I think the author's name is Pyth, P-E-I-T-H. So this one is by Kevin J. Hayes. I wanted to get the other one. And this is the annotated Poe. This was bought from a private seller online. So that's it for the books that I purchased uh, like through Amazon or at Strand this week. Now today we went to, I'm looking at the books I got today. We went to the St. Agnes Library in Manhattan. They have a book sale. I think it's twice a month. One day is during the week, which I can't get to. They had one today on Saturday. and i have been there once months ago. And my son loves taking the train, so he wanted to, to go, just mostly for the train ride. And my, you know, so my wife went, I went, and uh, they each bought one book, and I bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. So let me go over those first. Uh, actually, first, that's no need to say first. Let me just go over them. So uh, this book I have with a different cover, C.J. Cherry Kesrith. This is book one of the Faded Sun Chili. Trilogy, Faded, F-A-D-E-D, -E uh, it's a little glary, but this one, I don't have this cover, so that was really cool. I'd never even seen it like that. Hopefully I can find the other two to the series with that cover. Then I picked up uh, Persuasion by Jane Austen. It's an old vintage book. It was in great shape, and it also has at the back Lady Susan, which I'm not really familiar with. It's not like a full-length novel. Um... Heard heard it mentioned. I've seen it you know, on the internet, but I didn't really read what it was. What it was, but uh, actually, there's a little description of it on the back here. But I thought you know, fifty cents. That's pretty cool. The paperbacks I'm showing you here were fifty cents. Uh, and then Persuasion again, but this one has um, an introduction and is edited by D. W. Harding, and it also has a memoir of Jane Austen by J. E. Austen Lay, which is. L-E-I-G-H, and a, a relative of hers, I'm not sure how, uh, I will find out. So it had something in here that made the two books different, and plus the other one's vintage, I didn't really want to mess with that book and read it. So this one will be a reading copy, or I could just print one out of the computer since I have them all in PDF form. Then, another Jane Austen, this is Northanger Abbey. By the way, I mispronounced this book in the past clip. I'm not even going to repeat what I said, but I pronounce it like most people might pronounce it based on the words, uh, based on the, the syllables. So it's Northanger. I, just, I heard someone say it on the computer, 
And I was like, what? I said it wrong? How would I know? I mean, really, how would I know? So, And this this is um, edited, uh, int introduced by Alfred McAdam and his footnotes by him. And he spells his name funny. It's Mac, M-A-C. And it's not hyphenated. It's, that's his own word. And then Adam by itself. Kind of weird. Instead of McAdam, like all at once. All at once. Uh, Fire from Heaven by Mary Renault. I'm guessing you say her name, Renault. You don't pronounce the T. I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, so this is a novel of Alexander the Great. I think this was a couple of bucks. And this one, too, it would have been, I think, $2. This is it's like excellent condition, brand new. Robert Mitchum, Baby I Don't Care by Lee Server. Pretty good, for, you know, to find like that brand new. Then, uh, the last three, Soldiers, A History of Men in Battle. This is by John Keegan and Richard Holmes, with a foreword by Frederick Forsyth. And it looks pretty cool. Hardcover is excellent new condition. I'll put that uh, right over here. And then this book I have, but I have it in soft cover. And it's like $2, I think. Um, maybe three. Movies. 70 Years of Film History. A World of Movies. 70 Years of Film History by Richard Lawton. So seemed like a good price and I wanted to have the hardcover and the last one that I got is The Nature of War this is a big book here um, by John Keegan and Joseph Darricott The Nature of War and it's like a it's a bit of a mix of like coffee coffee table book and I couldn't find any reviews on it online um, so I don't really know I know Keegan's supposed to be a good author this will kind of sold me on buying it. There were some Indian Wars pictures, which I have already in other books, but I wanted to get it. It was cheap enough. It was like 2 or $3. So that's it for this week in books. Uh, months, by the end of next week, the month's almost over. October will almost be over. As I count down to retirement, starting November will be 20 months. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Little by little. Later. Hello, it is Wednesday night, October 25th, and time for a little book haul update video. On Monday at Strand, I was checking out the auction catalog books, and, and I found some nice ones. This is, these were $2 each. This is from 2016, it's session one. And this is 2016 Session 2, so they had both of them there. Pretty cool. $2 each. And then, the same day, in the same spot, I just got lucky. I'm always looking for Native American covers, and they're hard to find, or like Western-related covers. They don't come in too much. This is from 2017, Session 1 and Session 2. So I got like two complete sets from uh, 16 and 17. I'd like to find some other ones, but uh, I'm getting greedy there, aren't I? No, I'm not getting greedy. I would like to find some other ones from other years. Okay, then also on Monday, I picked up, this was uh, 50 cents outside. This is the guy who wrote All Quiet on the Western Front, Eric Remark. And it's called A Time to Love and A Time to Die. It's got a cool old vintage cover. And it was outside 50 cents. It's in okay shape. I mean, you could certainly read it. It hasn't fallen apart. But, it, you know, it's a little bit delicate. But for 50 cents, it's, you know, it's a cool cover. And I could read it. Well, if I ever get to read it. And then yesterday at Strand, I didn't get anything. They had nothing. And it was, like, starting to get a little bit windy out. And I thought it might rain. It started to drizzle a little bit. And I ran back to work because even if I bought something I had everything really to keep it dry when I left it was kind of sunny and but maybe a little bit windy and at, when I got finally got the strand like seven eight minutes later the sky changed and it got darker and 
I should have brought the umbrella. So anyway, today, I shouldn't say so anyway. It doesn't sound good. Um, so anyway, today, this was outside for $2, the Civil War Writings of Ambrose Bears. And this is, a, it's actually, that's a subtitle, Shadows of Blue and Gray, I guess is the title. And then it would be the subtitle, The Civil War Writings of Ambrose Bears. Two dollars outside. Nice shape. And also two dollars. This was hardcover. I have this book in softcover. So I have it now in hardcover. It's a uh, Myth of the West. There's different writers in here. It's kind of an assortment uh, or collection of articles related to the myth of Western art. It's pretty cool. It's Elvis on the cover, and uh, I get that's um, Bearstat, Albert Bearstat probably. And it's got a lot of cool Western art in here, Bob and Remington Russell, and a lot more. And this looks like an interesting book, and I'm I'm glad to find it in nice shape for two dollars outside. So you, know, you can get bargains if you go enough. What else? This weekend we're going to Long Island. It's a store that I sometimes do okay in. You know, maybe I'm lucky I find a book or two, but I don't really count on it. Um, but I, I have gotten, have found some good things there. Uh, it's not like going to some of the library bookstores we go to where I come home with 20, 30 books. You know, if I find one or two, and, and quite frankly, that's fine. <laughs> Because I've got so many books. That's not brag. That's just fact. It is probably five, 6,000 books in this apartment. Um, most of them, 95% of them being mine. So I'm just blabbing now. And unless I find something... Actually, I probably won't make another update video until Saturday. Uh, Saturday night. So see what I get on, on that day and what I find at Strand tomorrow and Friday. And that's it. Later. It's Friday night, October 27th, and this is kind of a last minute decision to do this video. I was going to hold off until tomorrow, Saturday, since I'm probably going to buy some books tomorrow. I just make one video for the last couple of days, but I did get four books today and decided I'd just go ahead and do a little update tonight. So outside Strand today, they, they surprisingly had a lot of paperbacks out that were better than the usual quality that they put out. Um, I was holding about a dozen of them in my hand and wound up putting all back except for four. So let me go over those. Memory by Donald Westlake. And it's got mixed reviews, mostly good, re good reviews. People who didn't like it, what they wrote really didn't mean anything to me. The people who liked it, I like what they said about it. Um, that was when I looked it up afterwards on Amazon and on, looked, looked it up on Google. I didn't know at the time that I bought it. I just I took a chance. This I had to get. It's uh, Lawrence Block, The Girl with the Long Green Heart. Uh, the cover is Robert McGinnis and I have a bunch of books with his cover artwork and uh, it was like this is excellent shapes, like brand new. Usually I don't put stuff like this outside. Today it was quite surprising what was outside. Um, so, pretty cool. Really, like once in, in six months or more, you'll find something like that. It, at least the time of day that I get there, that's that's the case. Um, Edith Hamilton Mythology. It's in great shape. Put it in a book bag. Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes. This is like, I think, basically all Greek and Roman stuff in here. Um... Yeah, uh, probably Greek and Roman. I'm not going to read the back right now, but I saw the words Greek and Roman. That was kind of a hint. Uh, then I picked up uh, Jane Austen. This is just really like a reading copy, Northern Jer Abbey. And it's got three other like little, I guess, not books that she did, maybe short stories. Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sandi Sandi Sanditon. And it's edited by John Davy. Not in bad shape, really. Um, you know, it's just it's it's not exactly new, but cool. Fifty cents worth it. So that was it. 
I put back some some of the stuff I had in my hand that I put back. It was like Doc Savage. I'm never going to read that. I don't even know why I picked it up. It had cool, they have cool covers. I kind of like the covers, but I just I don't have room right now to really collect covers. They had like three or four Doc Savage books, and there's some sci sci-fi, but I have to like skimming through them a little bit. I didn't really think it was for me. One of them I came close, and then I started to read like the description of like this like, alien, and I was just like, you know what? This is like kind of stupid sounding. So maybe the book's a good book, but I just didn't really care for the way the alien was sounding. <laughs> so that's about it, and uh, hopefully tomorrow I find some good stuff. Until then, oh, it's almost the end of the month. It's uh, Today's the 27th, four more days to this month. And then it's 20 months to go to retirement. Not to go overall, but just to retirement. Take care. It's Saturday night, October 28th. And as I suspected, I did find books today at the Book Review in Long Island. So here's a little video. I bought six books, average price around $6.80. The total cost was $41 and change. And that's more than I usually would spend, but I think I got some nice stuff, and I'm going to go over it now. So I picked up The Wild Girl by Jim Fergus. This is a novel that takes place in 1932, if the back is correct, it says 1932. And it's a kind of a coming-of-age story, according to the back of the book, and it has Apache Indians in it, and the search party in the, in the Sierra Madre Mountains of Mexico. Sounds interesting, got good reviews, and he wrote a book called 1,000 White Women that I have but haven't read yet, so I thought it was a good deal. I paid for that one, I forget what it was, maybe $4.50. Like I say, the average price was about six eighty, but that one was, I think, four fifty. Then this book I have in hardcover, but I, it was $8.00. And I wanted to get the, the soft cover version. Peter Cousins, The Earth is Weeping. Indian Wars uh, book. Came out last year, I think. So, I wanted to get the paperback. And then this book I have, but I don't have the hardcover. The Indian Agent by Dan O'Brien. And this is, this, there's another one called The Contract Surgeon, which you know, I'll find someday. I don't have right now. No rush shot. You know, I'll find it eventually. I don't need to go to like Amazon or eBay and get it right now. Uh, I think this is part two and the contract surgeon is part one. So and there's like Red Cloud on the cover. It was like brand new. Then I got three World War II books. Uh, let's go over these. This is um, The March to D-Day by J.E. Kaufman and H.W. Kaufman. And it's also titled The American G.I. in Europe in World War II. I guess that's maybe like the name of the series. Then the subtitle is The March to D-Day. And this was like about $7.95, $8. It's in like excellent condition. And then as I was going through this, there was like a stack of books that had that one on top. It looked like they all they all look like the same book. And I was looking for the best copy, but as I was pulling, it was like maybe like seven or eight high the stack. And as I was pulling the ones from the bottom out just to see which one was in the best condition, I noticed that they were actually two different books. So the next one, this seems to have been a three part series, and I have two of them here. Um, this is again the American GI in Europe in World War II, except this one is D Day storming ashore. So the other one was the March to D-Day, and this one is Storming Ashore. So, again, like, you know, brand new, no publisher marks or anything. And this last book here was $4, uh, D-Day by Brigadier Peter Young. It's a skinny book. It's in excellent shape. It's got pictures and text. Apparently, I think Peter Young was in the battle. I don't remember. I know. I thought I saw that. He, yeah, he commanded uh, six command commanded six commando during the landings, and his personal ex, personal experience adds a special interest to his account of the D-Day assault. So, cool pictures, and written by a guy that was there. Four dollars seems like a good deal. They had one on Midway, which I didn't get. Maybe I should have. 
Um, so I never seen it, you know, seen this series before. That was the one mid, the Midway book. Obviously, wasn't by Peter Young, but uh, I mean, I didn't get it. So that is it for what I picked up today. And now I have to find places for these World War II books. I just have to know where to put them. I don't know what to do. It's, it's going to have to be some work tomorrow rearranging books. And oh, so I spent so much time doing that. I can't tell you. But I love them. I love my books. Okay, so I guess it's uh, almost the end of the month. And another, I guess on maybe Tuesday, I will do tell what movies I watched this month. Quite a few of them. And maybe I'll find something at Strand on Monday or Tuesday and throw that into the mix. That's about it. Had a great day. Hope you did. And see you next time. It's Wednesday, November 1st, which means officially 20 months to go to retirement. However, this video clip is the last clip for my October countdown to retirement video. So on Monday, I picked up James Alexander Tom, Panther in the Sky hardcover. It was pretty much in brand new condition. Two dollars. I have the paperback, but I figured for two dollars it's worth getting. Just wish I had more space for everything. I still have books I haven't put away from the last few weeks. Okay, what books did I read during the month of October? A new book, Blood Brothers. It's a, by Deanne Stillman, and that's a book about the friendship between Sitting Bull and Buffalo Bill. I did not care for this book too much. I, there was quite a few errors in it. Um, it it's the, the author comes off as a bit of a new age type of person who thinks she communes with horses and not my kind of book. Then I read, uh, well this is not really in sequence, but I read Far as the Eye Can See by Robert Bausch. Um, I liked that book about as much as I liked Blood Brothers. I really didn't care for it too much. That was a wet Western fiction. Thunder in the Dust, which is a book of photographs from Western movies. I believe the photographs are John R. Hamilton. He was the photographer. He passed away. And the text is by John Calvin Batchelor. And the text, the, the photos, a lot of the photos are pretty nice, but the text by Bachelor was subpar. He really seemed to not care for the movie, Western movies. He just seemed to be putting them down. You know, everything was pretty much negative what he was saying. Um, I just didn't really care for what he had to say. Drums Along the Mohawk by Walter Edmonds. Those first three books, like you know, two, three stars, uh, mostly two. The Drums Along the Mohawk, four stars. Uh, that was a pretty good book. I have not seen the movie. I mean, bits and part, bits and pieces of it, but I don't really care to even see it. I know the book's better. From what I remember, it's like you know, one of these uh, not too accurate. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's kind of like The Big Sky, uh, which is an incredible book, and the movie with Kirk Douglas really sucks. I've seen parts of it. It's not a good movie. It does not represent the book. And from what I remember of Drums Along the, Drums Along the Mohawk, it's pretty much the same. It just can't capture what's in the book. Uh, so I gave that four out of five stars. Roads from the Fort. I'm almost finished with that book. It's a book by Arvid Schulenberger. I have about uh, maybe 30 pages to go in that book. And I could just pretty much rate it now. I'd give it like three stars. It's a, it's a book about two soldiers in the 18, late 1850s from Fort Randall in Dakota Territory. And they leave the fort to hunt. And they kind of, they're supposed to get like, a, they get like a pass for like a week. And they end up... Well, at this point in the story, it's not over yet, but they pretty much desert with these two Indian women and... We'll see what happens in the next, you know, couple of chapters if they go back to the fort or they stay as deserters. Um, what what thing that really bothers me about it? Well, first I looked up the author, and one website mentioned he was Jewish. Then I looked at his grave marker and there's a cross on it. I'm a little bit confused. I I don't know if the guy's Jewish, 
Christian, converted, I don't know what happened. It, but one thing in the book that he wrote, uh, I'm going to quote it, it's from page 169 of the paperback version. Um, this is a Lakota Indian speaking. Sioux, a Sioux Indian. Then white men came from the rising sun. Where was the Yankton God? Yankton is a tribe of Sioux. No place. All gone. White man God. White man's God every place. He is a God that is some good. Okay, it's so like the, the Indian can't speak perfect English, so he's, you know, saying, white. Uh, he is a God that is some good. So basically, he he renounces his own God. He, that God's nowhere. White man God is very good. Um, kind of pisses me off. I'm not sure that a Native American chief would say that. I don't know. Just kind of bothers me. So that's about it. Uh, oh, movies. I mean, that's about it for that book. But now the movies that I watched for the month of October. I watched quite a few. Twenty-five movies. So I'm going to just take them in sequence. I uh, and, and give a rating. I'm not going to really tell about the movies. Maybe in retirement, I'll do more in-depth movie reviews if I have time and the wherewithal to do it, the motivation. But right now, this, these are the movies that I watched. No Man's Woman with Marie Windsor from 1955. I gave it three and a half stars. Love Affair with Humphrey Bogart from 1932. I gave it three stars. Blast of Silence with Alan Barron from 1961, four stars. Dishonored Lady with Hedy Lamarr, 1947, four stars. Evelyn Prentice with William Powell and Myrna Loy, 1934 movie, four stars. Ramrod, a western with Joel McRae and Veronica Lake from 1947, three and a half stars. This is out of uh, five, by the way, out of five stars. Manhattan Melodrama with William Powell and Myrna Loy and Clark Gable, 1934 movie, four stars. Daytime Wife with Tyrone Powell from 1934, three and a half stars. Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth, this was a, several parts to that movie from 1995, I gave it five stars. Pride and Prejudice with Kara Knightley from 2005, I gave three stars. Blonde Ice with Leslie Brooks from 1948, three stars. Daybreak with Anne Todd and Eric Portman from 1948, four stars. The Scar, which is I also looked up, when I, when I looked up the movie, it said it was also known as Hollow Triumph with Paul Henry. 1948 movie, four stars. Gone with the Wind with Vivian Leigh and Clark Gable. What did I just say? Well, it's Gable. Came out funny. Uh, 1939 movie, three stars. That's a surprise, right? Um, it was good. It's visually interesting to look at, but I just thought it was a three star movie. Sorry. Uh, a farewell to arms with Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes, 1932 movie, three stars. Somewhere in time with Christopher Reeves and Jane Seymour. Despite the fact that the movie doesn't make sense totally, uh, it's, it's a 1980 movie, I gave that three and uh, three quarter star. So not quite four, but close. Double Harness with William Powell and Anne Harding from 1933. Four stars. Stagecoach with John Wayne, 1939. I gave that movie three stars. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll take a moment here for that one kind of fresh in my head. The things about that movie that bothered me, like for instance, they're in the stagecoach and the stagecoach is like going hellbent for leather across the plains and they show inside the stagecoach and like nobody's bumping around. John Wayne's even like sitting on the floor of the stage and talking and it's just like, why didn't they get some people on the outside to be rocking that stage back and forth? It was just kind of weird. And then really like bothered me most was an Indian attack towards the end of the movie. I mean, the white characters were taking like one shot and like two Indians would fall off their horses. It was just ridiculous. I mean, like the Indian, the fight scene was just crazy. I guess for its time, it was very exciting. 
but just came off foolish watching it. I'm not saying I don't watch it. It is a good movie. Maybe groundbreaking for its time, but I can only give it three stars. Where am I? And now tomorrow with Alan Ladd and Loretta Young. 1944 movie, three stars. Calcutta with Alan Ladd. 1947 movie, three and a half stars. The Legend of Walks Fall Woman with Raquel Welch from 1982, three stars. I have problems with that movie also. Uh, some of the, it, it takes place in the 1870s, and whenever they kind of have background, like a, it's not a historical movie, but when historical incidents cross paths with the movie, it's not really very accurate, and their whole little Bitcoin battle was not in reality. That's book, by the way, the movie is based on a book by Colin, Colin Stewart, or Colin Stewart, and I read another book by him, which I really liked. I don't remember the name of it right now. Oh, um, pretty good book. It was a coming-of-age story on the Blackfoot Reservation, I guess in the early 1900s. Uh, shoot an arrow, stop the wind, something like that. That might be the name of it. I don't remember exactly. I don't know how, I don't have the book to, um, The Legend of Walks Fall Woman, so I can't say how the movie compares to the book. The movie had some interesting parts that I like, some of it I like, but I, I'm just giving it three, uh, three stars. The Amazing Adventure with Cary Grant, 1936, four stars. Morocco with Marlene Dietrich and Gary Cooper from 1930. I gave that five stars. I like that movie. Shanghai Express with Molly and Dietrich, 1932. I gave that four stars. There was something in that movie, if I remember correctly, that... Was it that movie? I get confused. I think the reason why... I, one thing that turned me off was there was a, something to do with religion in that movie. I felt that the... Uh, wait, was it that movie? Mm. One movie that I watched, it was something where... the where I felt that the person, speak, there was a, a reverend in the movie, and, and um, speeches for a second, it, I'm trying to remember what I had to say, it, he, he, the reverend in the movie was confused, might have been Shanghai Express, the reverend in the movie was confusing faith in a person with religious faith, which is the two different kinds of faith. And so he was using it to demean science. And, but but his compa I don't remember like the exact thing that happened. And I, I'm not even going to swear that it was Shanghai Express. But I, I do remember that the Reverend character misrepresenting faith, which is a frequent thing. You know, they, yes, it's the same word, but it's a, not the same meaning. Like faith in a person, faith in a wife is not the same as having religious faith. It's just not the same thing. Why? Well, I mean, just quickly, religious faith is belief in a story that's so unreal, it's like crazy. Whereas, I mean, your wife or a friend is a person, and whether or not you have like faith that, that you know, when they're going to do something for you, or something, it's, it's different. It, it's not, it's within the bounds of reason to have faith in a person or not to, if they, if they haven't tr proven themselves trustworthy. But faith in a religion, that's just belief, having to believe in things that are just clearly out of everyday existence just don't don't seem possible okay and i maintain are not possible and the religions no, no religion is true that has like a supernatural god who created everything it's just crazy okay last movie of the month that i watched yesterday Touch of Evil with Orson Welles and Charlton Heston. I'm not a big fan of Charlton Heston. That movie was from 1958, by the way. And back to Charlton Heston now. He was the wrong guy for this part. He, he, play, he was playing a Mexican. They had a mustache on him. I don't know if it was his or fake, but... He just is in a Mexican. And didn't ruin the movie. It was still a good movie. But I'm, not, I'm not a fan personally. I know he passed away. You know, his politics and pro guns and I I'm not like that and so he kind of you know I don't like him for those reasons um, but it was a good movie 
and I'm not going to down you know downscore it because of him. But I don't or his politics and his pro gun stance and stuff. But I I uh, don't think he fit. The, I don't think he was the right fit for that movie to play that part. Uh, anyway, I gave that movie four and a quarter stars. It was a very atmospheric and good movie overall. Um, had some little issues with it. I don't even remember what they are right now. So that's it for the month of October, which is now officially over anyway. Today is November 1st. And we have two book trips planned for this month, for November. So one of them, one of them is to uh, a book sale upstate, and it's actually being held in two different places. So I'm real excited. I can't wait to go. I just wish I could be in two places at once. That's the problem. <laughs> How do I get to two places at once? Um, October's over. Can't believe it. Twenty months to go. I started this video series with 41 months to go so I've passed the halfway point and uh, the new New Year's is going to be the really big time because then it's 18 months to go and, and uh, so that's like my next big um, in my in my countdown my next big point that I want to get to when I cross off my list of of objectives not objectives but um, what's the word I'm looking for I'm blank. I had a long day. Milestones. Milestone. The next big milestone is New Year's. So, and then once we get down to a year, that's going to be really fun. And then 10 months, 9, 8, the, big count, the final countdown. Bye.